we shared a common vision about certain things that we would often discuss as far as the original purpose and vision for SAGE publications. And so as we were talking, um, we would often use special issues of the American Behavioral Scientist as market research or testing. And we did a special issue that the late Jerry Klein edited on research methods that were newly developing in the fields of mass communication and communication studies. And that went very well and led to the establishment of an entire publishing program in the field of communication research. Subsequently, we also began publishing in the field of cross-cultural studies, and again, we did a very successful book in that field, and it became something of an advanced textbook, actually, and that encouraged us to do not only more in building the cross-cultural studies list, but in making sure that there was an emphasis there on the research methods and techniques that would yield the best results for the minimum amount of money because that sort of research was very expensive and even then grant money and foundation money, government money to support it was, you know, it was challenging, it was a very competitive environment. So as we were growing we realized that having an emphasis on research methods was something that was common across many disciplines, something that was of interest to many different authors in many different fields. And that seemed to be one of the ways in which we differentiated ourselves. Another, of course, was that we firmly believed in publishing in fields that were in and of themselves interdisciplinary. And therefore, many of our research methods could be transferred from politics to social science or economics or statistics to sociology and government research. And it, it just became um, as you did sales analysis of rate of sales with respect to time, it became very obvious that there was a definite advantage to looking at research methods. And that was, in addition, validated by some of the early journal publishing that we did, testing out things in the American Behavioral Scientist, finding out that research methods in communication attracted great interest, finding it and proved new and challenging ways to study the mass media and find out more about how things ticked. The same was true in many fields of sociology, including interdisciplinary areas like criminology, family studies, urban studies, and so on. So our competitive advantages in those early days, and it has, I think, continued to be true, was that we were widely regarded as being very friendly to interdisciplinary research, whereas most publishers in those days, and I think to some extent even more recently, tended to have a kind of silo effect in their editorial and marketing programs that here were the specialists in sociology, here were the specialists in political science, there were the specialists in economics, there were the folks who did psychology. And we went across those fields as much as we could. And the other common denominator that we found within less than a decade that distinguished us and we became sort of the natural home to was work in research methods. 
and that the books that focused, as for example, the little green books, the quantitative applications in the social science series, the first uh, of our university paper series, they became bestsellers. I mean, within, I think it was, um, it was less than a decade after the company started that we launched this series. And we were blessed in terms of the people who responded by helping to edit it, by helping to launch it, by writing for it. And it wasn't easy to get people to write so that nothing was longer than 96 pages, so that they could all be published at a very user-friendly and student-friendly um, price. I mean, in those days, a, a statistics book just full of formulas or tables just didn't come out for three bucks a pop. And if you bought four for 10 bucks, it was really um, no surprise to me some years later when we had a party at our old headquarters in Thousand Oaks to celebrate the sale of the millionth Little Green Book.